Welcome back to the Concept Building Design video series. In this video, we're going to go through two different methods to create a facade in building space planning. The first method is the curtain wall. Using the curtain wall command, you can create concept level of detail curtain walls on a building. When you launch the command, you see that there are two directions of control for your pattern. You can control the horizontal spacing, the width of your panels, and you can control the vertical height of your panels. There's a handy ruler that shows up when you're manipulating these spaces, as well as a handy little key in box where you can set an exact value. When you click off in blue space, that's when the value is committed. And when you click on the green arrow in the dialog box, you exit the command and it's the geometry is created. Here I've set my spacing to align with my first floor slab. But if you look at the overall pattern across all the stories, because my surface is slanting, the pattern isn't going to meet at the slab for each one of my stories. So one trick around that is to highlight the dialog box where you can key in the value and then scroll all the way up to the top of the building. From there, the value is a little hidden, but you can change the value of the ruler at the, the controller from the bottom while looking at the resulting pattern across the entire surface up at the top. So there I found a value 3 meter and 50 millimeters, 3 meters, 50 millimeters, that fits across the whole pattern. And so I can execute or commit that, that command. Back in the tree now, I have a curtain wall feature. That curtain wall feature has four sub features or sub elements, sub elements. There's a transom, mullions, border, and a glass, a panel. I can control those parameters through the dialog box and that will change the dimension of those elements. One thing you'll notice when I made my building, story 30 is a, a fraction of a story that I'm not so, uh, not so happy with. So I'm going to select that story out of the tree and just delete it. Now I have fewer stories in my building and I can make a curtain wall on the other faces. So I'm going to select the curtain wall command again, and then I'll select the second face of my building. You'll see that again, because my surface is tilted, the pattern doesn't quite line up. First, it doesn't line up with the slabs, and second, it doesn't line up with the curtain wall on the adjacent face. But you will notice that building space planning has kept the same pattern as the previous face. So once you've defined the pattern in one face, the next face that you apply a curtain wall to will keep that same pattern. So what I've done is I've aligned the two curtain wall faces together, and then I've gone through and done that to the other four faces of that tower. Next, I'll start on the second, the shorter tower. So I'll select the curtain wall command. The pattern has been re replicated from the previous facades, but again, they don't line up. So modifying the value the, or the vertical spacing, I can eyeball the pattern at the slabs and get them as close as, as close as possible. So this one is still off a little bit. I'll change the value and click off in blue to see the pattern update. Still not right. Try it again. That one looks like it's a touch too high. So I'll change the value one last time and okay. One more last time. That's good. So I commit the changes. You'll see another curtain wall appear in the tree. This curtain wall is curtain wall number five. And then I'll go ahead and move on to the next surface, the next face of my building. Collect my, select my face, select my pattern, my, hor my horizontal line defining my vertical height of my panels. And just slowly tweak the pattern and that spacing to get them to line up right. So that's good. And this way, now the pattern is going to be continuous all the way around my buildings. I'll do this for the other surfaces. And then I've gone and done this for the bridge surfaces as well. One thing to know about the curtain wall command is that it uses the UV parameterization of a surface to do the panel pattern and the subdivisions. So with surfaces that grow and, and shrink, panels are all going to be different sizes. 
Now with the tower curtain wall panels out of the way, we can do the curtain walls for the bottom. So I'll select my first face and in order for the curtain wall to be continuous, you can select a second face that is tangent or curvature continuous with the first face that you've selected and that way the pattern can be extrapolated across those two faces. You see that this time building space planning did not remember my pattern because it was because that pattern was used in a different building and if you think back to when we did the massing and created the buildings for these the pedestal is not the same building as the towers. So I have two curtain walls on my pedestal and I have 10 curtain walls on my towers. Now we're going to look at how to do the panel wall, which is a second way to make facades in building space planning. If curtain wall is a conceptual design tool, panel wall is a kind of a mix between the two. The first thing that you need to do is after selecting the panel wall command, you can select what kind of panel you want to instantiate. By default, building space planning comes with a small list of panels that you can instantiate, glass, solid, or angled. You select the face that you want to pattern, and then you have a cell, this yellow, this yellow rectangle representing the size of the panel. And when you click it, it's going to instantiate the first one. It's also then going to populate that surface with a pattern, a pattern where you can place other panels. Let's look at the angle S simple panel. This is a panel that I actually created as a custom panel and has since been included with the standard installation of building space planning. In the future, we'll make another video on how to do custom panel wall panels. So we have the parameters that control the panel geometry. There's panel width, panel height, panel depth, reveal width, miter left, miter right, extend up, extend down, panel angle, and panel translate. Modifying these parameters, especially the size parameters, will impact the pattern because that pattern represents the potential locations where you can place a panel. Once you click on one of those yellow cells and it turns gray, you can then create that panel, which is going to instantiate a CATIA part or product into the tree. You're also free to grab those yellow cells and move them around freely and then create the panel. You change the parameters, the pattern will update, you instantiate a panel. One thing to note though, when you change the parameters, that's not going to change the panel that you just instantiated, it's going to change the panel that you will instantiate next. So if you want to modify the values of any of the panels that you have instantiated, you need to exit the command. So to exit the command, you click on the green checkbox, and then you can, using CATIA navigation, right click center tree to navigate to that panel. And you have access to all of the parameters that you manipulated when you created that panel. So here inside template parameters, you have the panel width, height, depth, reveal width, miter, overhang, angle, etc. And when you modify those values here, you can see that the model will update. Panel angle for example. Let's change that from 11 degrees to 6. Once I'm ready to go back to my pattern, I can double click on the panel wall feature in my tree and that's going to re-display the pattern and allow me to continue instantiating panels on that pattern. So I'm going to keep working on this angled panel. I modify the parameters, create my pattern, then I go back to my change my parameters and create my panel. In this case, at this point, I know that I'm not going to get all of the pattern parameters just right. The angles might be off, the offset might be off, but what is important is the height. As long as the height is right, I can modify most of the other parameters without much consequence after I've created the pattern. I knew when I made this panel, the angle wasn't right but I kept on with the panel wall command and now that I've exited, now's the right time to change the angle. So for this design, I've got two columns of angled panels and now I'm gonna put some vertical glass panels in the model to, to let light in and to break up the facade. So you see there is snapping in panel wall, that's nice. Keeps the panels aligned. Now I'm gonna create those glass panels. They'll be instantiated in the tree. 
if you lose your snapping, just bring the panel back down to where it had come from, and with a gentle touch, you get your snapping back. One great feature of panel wall is the ability to duplicate existing panels. If I keep the control button pressed, I can select and drag any number of panels, and it's going to create a duplicate of those panels. But it's not a duplicate like a copy-paste that you would traditionally see. This duplicate is actually creating instances of those same panels. So now you'll notice if I change the parameters of one of those panels, it's going to change not only that panel, but the corresponding panel that it was copied from. And so this might seem like a trivial, a trivial effect and a small portion of the facade like this, but once we copy all of these panels all the way around the building, changing only one or two of the panels will have an, a global effect on the overall design of the entire facade. I've generated two more columns of these panels, and now I'm going to edit my panel wall pattern and start replicating these panels across the rest of my facade. This is where the power of Gatia and an assembly logic really start to make productivity gains in your workflow. Because I'm making instances of each of these panels, I'm not going to be increasing the file size of this model at all. In Katia, this geometry isn't being duplicated, it's just being represented in more than one location. So even though you'll see these panels stretched across the entire facade, they're all the same panel. They're just being shown in, different, in multiple locations. So again, I held down control. I select all of my panels that represent one facade bay. And now I'm going to drag them across the rest of my facade. Again, the snapping makes this much easier to keep all of these panels aligned. Another thing you'll notice as I drag these panel bays across my facade is that even as they wrap curved areas of my building, each individual panel is going to adapt to that curvature. So panel wall is something that it works on flat surfaces or equally on one dimensionally curved surfaces. I do not recommend using panel wall on surfaces with curvature in two directions because it, you cannot instantiate panels with any curvature. Even these panels here, they're not adapting to the curvature of the surface. They're remaining flat and planar as they wrap a curved area of the building. As we progress copying these panels along the building, one thing to note is that the design inspiration for this pedestal was to create a facade that was woven similar to a, a wicker basket. And I wanted to do that with minimizing the number of unique panels. Rather than make a highly intricate facade where every panel is unique, this way I'm going to optimize my design while producing a, a desirable design effect. Uh, once I've gotten to the end of my building, you'll see that I have a couple of overlapping panels. I just select them in the tree and delete them. And now they've been removed from my building. And here we can explore the power of panel wall because these are all panels that have been instanced one from the other if i select any one of these panels and i modify those parameters you see every one of those instanced panels will be updated i can also then go into my building estimator and see how many of each type of panel i've placed in the building And with that, I can move on to the interiors of my building.